Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show where we are along, well, the North Somerset coastline, very, very close to the sea. Are we going sea fishing here at Totally Awesome? No, we're going float fishing for bream. We're here at Burton Springs Fishery, which I've never been to before. I tipped off about it from Craig Butler, West Coast Tackle, who said it's a good fishing up there, Graham. It's only small, a three lake complex up here, and Adam Hillings runs it. And, well, it looks like a sort of an angler's heaven in a way, a little a mini secret because you can catch trout here, you can catch big carp, or you can go float fishing on what I call the fun lake if you're just a pleasure angler. Well, Bream's the target. Let's go and talk to Adam. He's going to fill us in and let us know really what this place is all about. Hi there, Adam. Nice Good to be down in. Nice to meet you, Graham. Now then, tell us something about this fishery you've got. So, Adam. Nice looking complex you got here. Now, one lake's right by the car park, so what's in that one? So the first lake you come to here at Burden Springs is our trout lake. Um, fly fishing only on there. We stock with rainbows, browns, blues and tiger trout. Um, average stock rose from around a pound and three quarters up to 11 pound in the lake. Um, our lake record is about a 12 and a half pound brown trout out of there actually. Um, depths in the lake run to 13 feet at its deepest parts. It's deep um, then? It, it does go deep, yeah, because we haven't got the hugest of surface water so we obviously do need to keep it deep for in the summer months as well to keep it nice and cool. Um, we run catch and release and catch and retain fishing on the lake, um, so obviously people can take them home for their dinner or just come in and do a bit of sport fishing when they want to as well. Gotcha. Now how would you recommend somebody coming here to fish that? Is it floating line, sinking line, nymphs, lures? At this time of the year um, we do have quite a bit of weed in the lake as most travel lakes do um, and during the summer so the best way to go is floating line or you can get away with an intermediate but um, the best times are either late in the evening or early in the morning fishing with dries on the surface. Really, it's a good dry fly fishery? Very good dry fly fishery, yes. Do you get any sort of natural hatch here with insects? We do, obviously, depending on the time of the year, we get a lot of mayfly that come out at the right times of the year. Um, there are, because of the nature of the lake, bloodworm is always a good one that works throughout the months of the year as well on the lake. Um, and obviously, there are people on the lake that will strip lures back and take fish as well. So you can catch on naturals as well as um, fake lures as well on the lake. Sure. Now, do you, um, obviously, that's a, a day ticket uh, pricing structure. Do you do half days and evening tickets as well? We do run half day tickets. We do a two fish ticket for £20, which enables you to take two fish home, um, but also to catch and release once you've caught those two fish as well. We do a full day ticket, which is to take four fish for £26, and you can also catch and release once you've caught those four fish. Um, we do an evening ticket, which is just for £16, which we usually say any time after around 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the time of the year. Sure. Um, that allows you to take one fish home and do some catch and release from there as well. And fishing, I imagine, is it year round? Are they triploids you can fish year round? It is year round. We give ourselves off Christmas Day each year, but that's the only day we're closed. Other that's than that, shame. all year round, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's great. Uh, now, looking on your website, you've got quite a nice website going as well. I saw some pretty big, tasty looking carp on there. So I know you do carp down here. We're not fishing for them today. Mm. Just to explain about the carp, like you have got, size of fish, and actually how the system operates. So yes, you're right Graham, we do also have a specimen carp lake here, um, it averages about two acres in size. Um, we have six swims on the lake, four doubles and two single swims. Um, we have a stock of carp in there that range from around £10 up to £33 um, is our biggest fish in the lake. Um, average size in there is around £14.5 to £15. With, we've got up to about 32 different 20s that we've got to count in there at the moment as well. Is that right? really? uh, we have indeed three known 30s. Um, we run a booking system on the lake because we do have limited space on there and we manage the numbers where people have to actually pay in advance two fish on the lake but then they book their swim and then we guarantee that that swim's there waiting for them when they come in. Sure. Um, there's no restrictions on the start or end time. Um, um, people can come in as long as the swim is free and they book it in advance, we guarantee that the swim is there waiting for them when they come in. Uh, we operate day tickets Monday to Thursday from March through to October. Um, there's no day tickets at weekends during that time, it's just 24 hours or longer. Um, but from then, from October through till March during the colder months, we do run day tickets over the weekend as well. And it's £10 for a day ticket and it's £20 for 24 hours on there. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. So that's popular, obviously, it's, it's pretty well booked. You've got to, it's advanced booking only, almost really. It, to be fair, our specimen lake here really. Obviously, it depends on your type of fishing, but it is considered our, our jewel in the crown, really, here, to be honest with you. It is very, very popular. Um, we, we offer a nice environment to fish in. It's not very pressurised, and there are some stunning, pure English linear fish in there. Now, I noticed in uh, Fishing Up, and, uh, you know, you've got pictures. That's what uh, caught my imagination or my photographer's eye, that they're not the shape of these great big pot-bellied 
carp that you see mm -hmm. weighing 300 weight mm -hmm. they're you know beautiful shape fish is that something you sort of pride yourself on here that, that's right graham it's we, we don't have any foreign carp in the lake whatsoever they're all pure english fish in there um the the um we have a lot of pure apple slice mirrors in there sort of big fully plated mirrors commons we have grass carp in there that run to 30 pound as well um, and we do take great care and our, our customers do as well in maintaining those fish as well we we supply um large landing nets mats and cradles for everyone that fishes on there um we operate a barbless hooks policy um, and we do try to insist that sort of the anglers care for the fish as much as possible to maintain that quality of fish going forward as well. That's good, that's good. Minimum uh, breaking strains online? Um, minimum breaking strains we use on the lake is £10, um, although £12 is preferable. And what about braid? Or what's, what's your opinion on braid? We allow braid for herrings. Herrings to, we, we allow braid for herrings to be used, but there's no braid mainline to be used. Um, okay. As I say, it's a barbless hooks policy only. Um, the only bait restrictions are we don't allow any nuts or peas to be used on the lake. Okay, so you can use floaters there as well? You can use floaters. Um, the carp are very finicky on the surface. Um, we've had this year so far, I think we're up to about 15 carp that have been caught on the surface so far. So they are there to be caught, but they are very wary. So um, it's not an easy fishery? It's, it's not It's not a runs water by any means. Um, it wouldn't be with the quality of the fish in there. Um, I say to anglers that if you take sort of a couple of fish in 24 hours at this time of the year, then you're on about par, to be honest with you. But nine times out of ten, you can guarantee those fish are sort of 15 pound and upwards when you do catch them. Yeah, quality of English species fish is what you're selling there, really, isn't it? It is, yes, and the quality of the fish, full stop. Um, that you, it's very rare to see any fish come out of there with any hook hold damage or sort of, um, you know, sort of fish that look like they've swum into brick walls where they've had their lips pulled off and gone. You don't do that down the lake down there. That's good. That's good. Now, what's on the bottom of the lake? Is that gravel? Or is it mud or what? Tell the, us about that. The lake, the carp lake, and all three lakes here are all dug in clay. Um, so it's clay bottom. There is no snags on the lake whatsoever. Um, our carp lake doesn't have a single piece of weed in there either. So it's a very clear bottom. There are some gravel patches that run through there. Um, the average depth in the lake is around five foot with some couple of deep spots that run to around seven feet. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Any particular baits? What, what would be your suggestion on baits? Uh, at the moment, at this time of the year, maize is actually working very well. Um, boy leaves have obviously always been a popular one down there. We have sold and stocked mainline sell here for a number of years and that is probably the number one bait that is used down there. Any particular flavours at all? Or um, colourings? Yeah. This year it does seem to obviously change by, by the year really. This year a lot of people are having success with banana and banoffee flavours down there. Sort of yellow boilies seems to be working better than anything else. Um, again come the colder months maggot can be better than anything else down there. Don't overlook some of the simple baits. Exactly, um, yeah. And I've seen some of the biggest fish come out of there on baits like meat corn. You don't always have to overcomplicate it with the latest and greatest baits. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> I'd like to catch one. <laughs> <laughs> now the one we've come to fish is what would you call that your pleasure lake we, we do like to call it a pleasure lake um, we've created a lake that is really there for anglers of all abilities to be able to turn up and catch fish all day long really and let's stop with run us through the stock the stock in the lake is predominantly bream um, we have skimmers going all the way up to bream from around half a pound up to around six and a half pound in size hopefully you'll get into a few of those today um, nice, we do have a good head of crucian carp in there which are pushing to about a pound four ounces of the biggest ones at the moment we stocked them when we actually created the lake around two and a half years ago from new about half a pound so they're coming on um, we have perch in there that run to three pounds we do have carp in there that run to 17 18 pound but they are few and far between compared to the numbers of other fish in there um, and we've got a very good head of tension there as well that run up to around seven pound is the biggest we've had out of there that's interesting very interesting yeah so now techniques here uh, pole fishing, ledgering on the bottom, what would you suggest, float fishing, um, margins? The majority of people on there, they will float fish. Um, people can ledger for the carp on there, but it's not the most effective method on the lake. Um, float fishing is by far the best method. Um, you don't need to fish far out in the lake because there is a good depth of water running to almost 12 feet. You can fish just in the margins on the lake and you're in around five foot of water. Feed little and often, fish on the bottom, corn meat, pellet or paste at the moment at this time of the year and you should be a fisher cast on there all day. So you don't, need, you don't need a ton of ground bait? You, know? you, you don't need a ton of ground bait. During the winter, the colder months, people use ground bait and fish maggot or worm and can work well, but at this time of the year, a particle approach seems to be working best. Now, also you've got here uh, some nice pine-looking lodges. Uh, what facilities have you got to offer? For uh, the yes, we, we offer here where I'm standing at the moment. We have a shop area. Um, we sell some baits here, sort of various ranges from hemp through to pellets, paste, um, some boilies. We sell some fishing tackle as well, some main terminal tackles, hooks, split shots. Um, we sell some flies and leader for the fly anglers as well. Also some hair rigs from the carp anglers. Um, we all have uh, tea and coffee making facilities. We sell food here. 
Um, we have some cold drinks, ice creams as well for the warmer months. Um, next door, we've got um, a newly built toilet next door, which we do pride ourselves. I do think it's probably one of the cleanest toilets you'll find in a fishery anywhere in this country. Um, I thank my mum for that one. Um, and we do have an alternative lodge next door, which a lot of anglers we use for shelter. We've got a TV in there, but we have a number of um, classes and schools that come down here where they do lessons in there or fly time, for example, as well. Okay, great. Well, listen, Adam, thanks for giving us an insight into that. I appreciate it, and we're going to go down and give it a crack. So you think the Totally Awesome team cannot possibly fail to catch at least one breed? There is not a chance in hell. You'll <laughs> be pulling them out all day long, I can assure you, Graham. Fingers crossed. Anyway, let's get cracking, guys. He's got me all wound up. I want to get down and get some sweet corn in the water. Mike got to tackling up a small waggler float and was soon into his first Burton Springs fish. There are a few carp in this lake, so you could always set up to target them. But it's really a place to practice your float fishing technique. You can fish the pole or the running line with a fixed ball reel. It doesn't really matter, as the fish do seem to bite steadily. Guys, I've had about five bream, I think, so far. On the, the body float there. Uh, let's get this one in. This is a skimmer here. Stun hooking. There we go. Technique sweet corn is definitely the bait that's working at the moment. Nice little skimmer there. Straight back in. Get that float out, get the sweet corn out. There it goes. This lake is only small, but that makes it ideal for novices, beginners, or anglers just wanting to grab a few hours fishing. Nearly everyone I saw was using the float, and it was good to see the skill factor being used rather than electric bite alarms. Well, I finally got down to going fishing after doing all that filming, dragging around. Mike's over there catching fish. He thought, I better make sure the baited area's okay where all this sweet corn's going. Yes, it is. He's catching bream. I think he's had roach as well. But just run through it for float fishing with bream. Just using a small match reel. It's a shallow spool match reel, so it doesn't take a lot of line. And that has got on there six pound pro gold. Just happens to be what I use. We're not sponsored by it. Probably had it back two years 13 foot match one and then I'm using here I want to don't lose it up the tree before I get to show you I'm using a waggler but I believe that's called a canal waggler and because I'm fishing in an area of glare I've got a black tip float there I've locked it either side with small shot that's my six pound main line I've got a loop to loop connection and there I'm using about 18 inches of a hook link which is lighter than the main line. I'm using this stuff called Stroft which is 3.60 so that's actually heavier than my main line but it's finer. That's what I was told. It was Mal's story up at Kidderminster Tackle Shop told me about this barbel fishing line. He said that's really good for hook links this Stroft and that's what I'm using. I uh, recommend that to uh, no question at all. Good for the bream because they say the finer you can go without being stupid like pound hook links you will get more bean bites and I'm using here size 12 barbless hook that's what I'm using a fairly wide gape on it I like a wide gape because obviously even a single grain of sweet corn is quite quite a chunky bait really and I'm going to bait that with just a single grain of sweet corn but here's the most important thing with regular float fishing I do it my way you bulk the, most of the shot here just under the float and you take it down to well just under where you want the mark to be the float to settle in the water and then I use a tiny like a number six that's all I use a number six shot and I put that about four or five inches I suppose that is from the hook link so that is actually 
sitting on the bottom. If it drags into deeper water, it won't pull the float right under. It will just pip it down a little bit more. So hopefully that will be set just right. But should there be any drift, that will stop me sliding out the swim while I'm baiting it. I'm feeding. Just plain sweet corn. They tell me here, just plain sweet corn. Generally I like green fishing with, well, worms. Double red maggots. Brandling tip with double red maggots. Feeder fishing. But this is float fishing for them. Very, very close. Fishing in the margins here. It's quite a lot of angler pressure. It's, it's, it's not a big water, but there's a lot of fish in here. So once you get them going, they tend to stay with you. But you've got to feed them regularly, so I'm told. And that's what we've been doing. So I'm going to find out in a minute if there's anything anything I'm doing wrong here. Hopefully not. Now here's one of the few places you can actually use a keep net. Years ago we didn't used to use um, keep nets for well anything but matches really. Or, or if we were doing a journalist report and we wanted to show a big catch of fish. Nowadays, I say it's frowned on, people just don't do it. Here they do, so I'm going to use a keep net, but first let me show you a proper way to put the keep net in the water. Okay, so if you're going to get a keep net, make sure you get one that's big enough. And this one, oh, it's just about big enough to take me. And some more. So get a really big one. Now, are you going to laugh if I can't get out of this? No, don't, don't, don't laugh if I can't get out of it. <laughs> it really smells of slime from the previous catch. I haven't used this for a long time. Oh dear, it's rank. Okay, make sure here it's all rigid and tight when you screw it into the bank stick. Now, they've all got ridges in between them, but these, if, they, if you use a really big one, can collapse and fold in on the fish. So what you can do, you can either put your bank stick, another bank stick, through this, stretch it right out like this so it's nice and tight, and then peg it down, or some people pipe, you know, they go and buy a big two pound sea fishing lead, tie that on there and you actually throw it out and that sinks it and then you can pull up tight like this, stretch the net out and then you can put your fish in there. This is what it should look like when it's in the water. Okay, another tip is to soak it first before you actually throw it out in the water, otherwise it's just going to float on the surface. It takes ages to sink, even with a, a lead weight. Obviously if it's a long way out and it's deep, you can't walk out there with a bank stick and spike it to stretch it out. That's mostly in shallow water, so in deep water, put that lead weight on the bottom throw it out and you should be okay. So soak it first. Okay, that's nice and heavy now to put it in the water, but put it to the opposite side of the swim that you're going to be float fishing, otherwise you're going to put it in the same swim, you might lose a fish, you might spook the fish, they might not come on the feed. Because in the margins you want this the opposite side of where you're float fishing. bring the neck up here near where you're going to sit so that you don't have to keep like I normally do walk miles backwards and forwards and put a fish in the net if you watch people match fishing they have it really close so unhook the fish straight in the net it is efficient it is the way to go green fishing really guys third cast in not a bream <laughs> it's not a bream I've been lured by the dark side <laughs> it's got to be a carp I can't imagine this being a bream but I'm trying to sort of tangle up, so I've got a massive loop up in my line. I don't know if it's going to break or not. We'll just see if we can get lucky and try and get you this fish. At least see what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's a carp. I've got to take it very gingerly on this mackerel. And my problem is, when that loop and line comes back through the rings, if it jams in the ring, fish bolts away, it's, it's all over. And what I'm doing here is I've got the drag on, because I'm like, but I've also got it on backwind as well, because I don't trust the drag you know, I've got the back one, I can just let go and the line can come off. But there's no way it's a bream. It is sort of the downside, they say there's not many carp in here. But, you know, when you're feeding regularly, like the sweet corn, here comes a tangle I think. There's no, there's no way of telling what's going to take your bait really. So it might get in the bream. And I've either got an absolute monster bream here. Or I feel a carp. Now here, oh dear, <laughs> oh dear guys, just look here. <laughs> this is not, if you're fighting a big fish, this is not what you want to see. It's a huge knot in the line. It's like a blood loop that I should be sea fishing on. Oh dear, a great big loop like this, and I've got tiny little rings. Oh, he's digging and digging. Do you know what I saw? I hope, I hope he's not gonna come into my keep net that I put out there. Oh, the loop's on the rear, is that going to give me a problem? 
it's probably actually safer on the reel and then I can wind other loops over it and crush it down. Oh. Not what you want on a canal float, right by the net. Come on. Hate losing fish you can't see, it's just nice to see the fish. Man, he's got this rod locked over, absolutely locked over. He's diving for the keep net again. I've been three hours without fishing. Eventually I sit down to have a go while Mike's starting to catch the bream. Everybody around the lake, as you saw those other catches when they finished the match, are catching bream. And I've lumped into something that's not a bream. Just want to see it, just want to see it. Chances it'll break off pretty high. You've just seen it boil on the surface, it's quite a nice mirror carp actually. Well, for a match, for a match rod it is. It might boil again, you might see it on the surface. Here he comes. Ooh. You just can't afford to pressure big fish. You know, it's very easy if you're a youngster to want to clamp down and not with a tiny small hook, you know, light lines, you just can't, you can't bully the fish. He's got to let the rod do the work. Yeah, that's a carp. The dark side, I'm on the dark side. I've gone back to carp, I've only had three casts. Another thing that I hoped you hadn't wanted, well, I didn't really want you to see, but I'm afraid you're going to have to see. I have my landing net, but I have a child's bamboo pole. <laughs> because I couldn't find my other one <laughs> with a rubber motorbike grip on the end, guys. I mean, it's totally awesome, come on. And I'm not sure <laughs> the carp's going to fit in here. Well, we were coming breaming. Now, I'm not really a match fisherman, guys, and I've got to tell you, we've had to switch the camera off. I'm now bored. I want to haul it in quick. And I mustn't, I mustn't. I mustn't get lured. Oh, I've got the pressure maxed out now. I don't want my little knot going through the rings anymore, so... This is the critical time because the more line you've got out, the more stretch you've got in the in the, in the, in the nylon line. And the closer you get, that's dangerous, no stretch. One head shake, one bolt, one lunge, pop, gone. It's a risk on one light tackle. He's in the bamboo pole. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you call a nice bream. Let's get him on the mat, have a look at him. Oh, we got him in the net. Look at that. I was lucky there, people. What a beautiful looking fish. I guess the fish goes about seven pounds. But look, beautiful fin. Absolutely perfect along there. Beautiful scales. Lovely orange tail. Let's have a look at it. There we go. Just gently. I'm not putting this one in the keep net. No carp in keep nets. Beautiful fish. Third cast. It was worth all that photography for three hours because I'm going to be right in the zone in a minute then Mike's going to have to worry about things. Just get one quick still off this fish. There we go. What a beautiful fish. Almost like an ornamental pond fish, that one. And he's going to zoom off and soak us in water. No problem with that. Nearly. I only wanted some bream. I keep getting lured to the dark side. What is it with these carp? And one of the things with bream fishing, in fact for any fish, and even roach, is actually how you put the kernel of sweet corn onto the hook. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, so the kernel of sweet corn is where it's been snapped off from the stalk is here, just down there. That's soft, and this side's hard. Now, a lot of people going through the soft side, bring it out, but what I find is it wobbles around here on the cast, and that pulls out, and you actually see quite a lot of the hook there. I don't know if you can see that, you can actually see quite a bit of the hook. So I don't go in through the soft side. What I do is go in through the hard side first, in the top, the outside edge of it, go in through the middle. Now I bring it out from the side, pull it right the way through, turn the shank of the hook the other way, if you can see that. So it's just, the hook is just on the outside of a single grain of corn. Now if I just tug it, it's absolutely laying. You can just see that, I roll it around there. You can see it's almost impossible to see that hook. And yet, the point is just sticking out there. Now, another little tip is for Bream, on um, such a dull day, it doesn't really matter, but on a bright day, if you tip that with double red maggots, they love it when it's bright blue sky and you can still pick them up during the daytime. So I've had a few bream here, starting to come on the feed a little bit now. 
And that's what I found they're taking, a perfect single grain of corn. Okay, brim are covered in slime. You'll find a lot of mash guys do this and it's pretty handy once you get a rhythm of catching a lot of bream. Just get an old tail like this, put it in your knee, okay? So when you've unhooked the fish to put it in the net, you can just wipe your hands like this on top there. It keeps it nice and clean, grabbing the rod butt. You don't get covered in bream slime. Don't slip, you don't slide, just keep it like that. But, right now this is just a regular day ticket fishery. It's commercial. The fish know perfectly well what food is. Therefore, you do not need to use a bucket load of ground bait. Well, I like to, but you don't need to here. They see food, they know what, every day what's going in the water. So they're gonna come around, but, but is what you use. Now, what I find, is only me personally fishing for bream, is if you just get regular trout pellets, okay, I'm not gonna make a paste of them, but just regular sinking trout pellets, I crunch them all up so there's all different sizes in there. You can see it's powder, which I can put in ground, but I can mix this with ground, but if I want. But I'm just going to also throw these in as loose feed. Now, these fine little bits, look, I can get that's almost dust there. This is almost in the corner, it's almost dust. That goes down onto the lake bed and that will hold the bream. I feel that will hold them in that area. They've got that smell there, looking around, looking all the time, smelling what is it what I can eat. They will eat these other grains, that sort of size. Now all I've got to do, do to get to that stage, get these pellets, crunch them up with a pair of pliers, just a bit time consuming, but it works. Then put your sweet corn right over the top, and then you've got all I, well, that's basically all you need for bream, certainly float fishing, is trout pellet is your base, if you like, your base that's sitting on the bottom, and these, if I show you like this, that's sort of what it's gonna look like on the lake bed, sweet corn on top of the trout pellet and then keep it going in little and often. That's definitely what they want. They want it tumbling down over their heads. Very often if you throw five or six grains, five or six grains, a little bit of trout pellets, and then cast out the float settles, and it generally, generally goes out pretty quickly, it will sink. Now, the other thing is, you notice here, I've concentrated that, it may be, Two feet, two feet round. Don't forget, I'm only just have a rod length out. If you keep it nice and tight and accurate, even if your float drifts a little bit, you should still be within that baited area. See if we can catch one now, we know what we're talking about. Make sure you overcast the baited area with your float. Sink the line with a few turns of the reel and draw the float back into your feed area. That way, it shouldn't drag out of position. And if you use a traditional match rod of about, say, 13 feet, do remember it has a light, flexible tip. Let the spring of the rod wear the fish down. With careful handling, you can land a pretty big fish using match rods. Make sure you shot your float correctly so just half an inch of tip is showing. And of course, with this type of setup, you never really know what's just moved into your swim. People, I'm on again, but don't know how to break this to you. Got quite a few beam in the net, not a lot, not a lot, because we started so late, we only had a couple of three hours at it. Brand new reel, brand new model. Tokushima, 4000. Unfortunately, the dark side got me yet again. Carp came up in the margins, biscuit went out, job done. Well, it's done when it's in the net. Couldn't help it, I'm sorry, but we're just about to pack up. We had a really good time float fishing. Had a new fish we've never been to before. Obviously a lot of fish in this lake. And hopefully get a carp to close out with, and then we'll show you some of the bream. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bamboo poles working by the way guys.
Do you know what I call that? <laughs> a common bream. <laughs> it's a carp, obviously. But nice to show that the fish are coming on. I think the bream have gone off a bit and the carp are coming on. So a quick peep at this one and I'm going to show you the bream in the net. We'll let them go because it's dinned in this time. Well, I'm sort of sorry that I had to turn to a carp to finish off with it. It would have been nice with the bream, but I will show you the bream in the net. Get this one back and show you. We had, Mike had a few up there and I've had some out here. We could have had more if we started earlier though. It's one of those days and that's soaked. Look at that. Yeah. Well, on that roll, mucked up, I might as well get the bream anyway. Show you quickly what we've got. <laughs> there are some bream here. Let's have a look at this. Now this is how I short them up. I've got them on the on the way mat, but I haven't tipped them all upside down. So I just leave the net like that, let them calm down for a second. Everybody calm down. I'm going to show the nice people on YouTube. Just a sample. Float fishing for bream. Nice looking fish. Not monsters, not monsters, look, but good sport. Just a regular pleasure fishing day. I don't know what there is there, 20 pounds or so. No real, no real jumbos, but it just shows you. Putting that trout pellet there, waggler float, sweet corn over the top. There we go, guys. Nice little catch, float fishing for bream on the waggler float. Just a regular day ticket place. Oh, it's a good sport, though, isn't it? It's a good sport. Let's get these guys back. I haven't used a keep net for years and it brought back fond memories of triple keep net hauls of Irish bream running into the hundreds of pounds. Years ago they used to say if you catch a bream and return it, as it swims away it takes the rest of the shoal with it, just like sheep, they follow the leader. Now I don't know if that's true, but all I do know is the Burton Springs bream were pretty quick on the bite. While we were there, only for the afternoon, a few anglers had a mini match between them, so they got a head start. This is the weigh-in from their match. It looked to me like the best of the bream boy was in the morning. For it. And all on the float, this was it? All float fishing? All float, yeah. It's a nice stamp of them. Throw it up. Oh. The stray one that could win the match, that is, yeah, you know? Say, you never know. Hey, I was going to say, he's got that grin on his face over there, which usually means he's had a good day. You think he's got it in the bag, as they say? Yeah. Well, you've got it in the bag at the moment, yeah. but we'll see what it says. In the 40s, would it be that? No. 25. Oh. 25 pounds. Is that all you've caught? My yeah. God, I'll be happy with that today. Me you drop it back? Are you alright? Yeah, I'll be alright. Yeah. We're hoping this gent's got a nice bag of fish today. No pressure, Tony, but I've heard good stories. Yeah. <laughs> Is it all on corn again today? Yeah. Just a few on the uh, soft pellet. Yeah. Just out in front of you or in the margins? No, right, that's fine. I've had three. Four cut. The last one, so I've got oh, three with okay, yeah. that. Oh yeah. Oh, you need your wheat to back say I'd like to lift that lot. Cool, we didn't try very well. Try and get a good look at a big brain. We didn't start very well at all, did we? So you say you think this might be your PB, your record? Fifty one. Fifty one pounds, yeah. 59. Well 59. <laughs> That's an awful lot of bream though. Right, we've got 51 pounds of beet. Um, let's see what Vince has got down here. Oh, I think he's... That's, that's, I wouldn't want to call that one. Got a bit of a hole starting at the bottom of that keep net. Yeah. Yeah, I see one crucian. Little tench, crucians. Nice. Little crucians there. That's a nice size one. Yeah, it's a nice one. Well done, Vince. You got anything on the other net as well? No, no, no. That's this one. Yeah. And what was that on? Is it all corn? Uh, no, that, no, that was on paste and uh, luncheon meat. Oh, 
So the, there's no secret bait in here really, it's just what you're catching with on the day. Vince has a secret recipe for his paste. I was going to yeah. I was going to ask what's in the paste, but I thought I'm not going to get an answer, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Closely guarded secret, yeah. I've been trying for years to get it out. Uh, 38. Really? Uh, I thought they would have weighed more. 39. I'm saying that because he's got two nice crucians in there, I want to photograph. I would have really very thought well that was in there. Moments. Good catch, oh. Yeah, very good. And what size do they run to, the crucians? Go up to about, about pound four ounces, yeah. the biggest I've seen out of her. And are they growing these? They are indeed. Oh. They were all put in about half a pound two years ago. Nice. Good man, nice catch. Well done, Vince. With the bream film completed, we were off to yet another venue. So keep watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, quite simply the best angling show around.